Well, hello, colleagues. Uh, I hope you had a restful and enjoyable Independence Day weekend. We're back at things again and uh, moving right along. And I wanted to share another video blog, a vlog, as you will, for what we're doing in this unit. Um, and specifically, I want to focus on some of the thoughts that I had and responses to the work by Haverstadt in his book, Managing Church Conflict. I had a mentor several years ago who made this very astute observation about human behavior. He said that whenever two people are meeting, there are actually six people meeting. I thought that was a bit of a head scratcher at first, and he went on to explain. He said there are the two people as they see each other, there are the two people as they see themselves, then there are the two people as they really are. And uh, while he was not promoting multiple personalities, what he was describing is the need for self-awareness, how we actually are compared with who we see ourselves to be and how we are compared with or contrasted with how others see us. I really thought of that in some of the earlier work that uh, Halverstedt offered in his book, particularly on the matter of one's own emotions or feelings um, and what those might mean and the importance of getting in touch with those, identifying those and processing those, particularly for those of us who are working as conflict managers. That becomes extremely important. In fact, I was really struck by some things that he said. Starting on page 21, here's what he said. The first task of becoming a Christian conflict manager, therefore, is to follow this directive from David Viscott. When you look at any situation and have feelings about it, note your reactions and understand what they mean. Then he continues that thought a little later and says, until we, speaking of us as becoming conflict managers, until we detect the thoughts underlying such feelings, we cannot know what we're really dealing with in conflictive situations. As we discover such habitual, unconscious thoughts within us, we can then know what is coming from us and what actually exists in the circumstances outside us. I think what he's describing is the importance of self-awareness. How we see ourselves, how we're seen by others, is how we really are, which is what my mentor was getting across. I was really intrigued, too, by Haverstadt's writing about how early life experiences form the thoughts the perceptions, the emotions that we have about conflict, and whether or not we were guided through um, positive experience of conflict and conflict revolution, resolution, or if they became negative things that we then work to avoid. I want to talk a little bit about what my experience was early on, both as a pastor and as a fellow Christian because of basically who I am wired to be as a human being. For whatever reason, I started out in early church ministry with a strong people-pleasing nature. What other people thought uh, about me and my work, how they responded to me and my work, very much defined how I saw myself. And so you can imagine that there were some very disappointing anxious-ridden and frustrating experiences early on when I was using what I now consider to be an incorrect standard of assessment um, to make sure that I'm an effective leader and more importantly that I have intrinsic value. A little later when um, Halberstadt begins discussing uh, the role of assertiveness over on page 38 he made a an important statement. He said, the key to anyone's assertive, being assertive rather, lies in one's fundamental sense of oneself, either of shame or of self-worth. He goes on a little later on page 40 to say, assertiveness is basically a mentality, 
a deeper inner conviction that one is a creature of inherent worth and a loved one of God. And then in his conclusion in that section, on page 43, he says, what is required for assertiveness is self-worth, knowing that one is loved and valued as an imperfect child of God. Well, I wish I hadn't struggled as much as I did early on in my separation of my own identity in the eyes of God, my own standing with God and how I saw myself, the separation of that from how I approached my role as a leader or a participant in resolving conflict, particularly when it was bound up in my people-pleasing nature. What I came to learn eventually about myself was that I felt responsible. Either I felt responsible for having contributed to a conflict, sometimes I had, but many times I had not. Or I felt responsible for being the party that would resolve the conflict. Sometimes I was responsible, but many times I was not the one mainly responsible. I really enjoyed how Halverstadt went on to describe the different parties that participate in conflict and uh, the concentric nature beginning at the middle um, and then working outward from there. I always put myself at the middle for some reason, whether I was or not. Particularly, I found early on that when um, others looked to me and felt as though I was responsible or I self-imposed responsibility, I became defensive. And when I became defensive, then it was when I was working to become assertive, and often my assertiveness turned into aggression um, as a defense mechanism. And what I really liked about what Halverstedt wrote was the, the calm, self-assured, self-identity roots of conflict resolution as a participant or as a leader so that we're able to separate our value from our role in the conflict, uh, whether as a participant or as a manager of the conflict. One great source of solace and comfort, refreshment I've received is the example of Jesus. Jesus found himself in conflicted situations often, many times with his own disciples. What John doesn't record in his gospel, other gospel writers do record about some of the discord and contention that broke out during what we call the Last Supper, the Passover meal, when Jesus confronted um, uh, Judas in particular uh, with the eventual um, betrayal that he would commit and how that created such tension among them. But what I really love is what John does include about that scene. This is John chapter 13 beginning in verse 2. He says, The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. And I, I take note of this. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. I take note. Number one, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. Could we think of that from a pastoral perspective? That empowered by the Spirit, authorized by the Spirit, used by God as a manager of conflict in a pastoral setting, that we do have authority from which we work. But then notice an even more core identity here noted by John about Jesus. That Jesus knew that he had come from God and was returning to God. There's self-awareness. There's self-assurance. There's assertiveness. 
Jesus could do what needed done to provide an example to his disciples about what it means to be a servant and what he was about to do and how not only was he a manager of conflict in that situation but we know in the gospel ultimately he became the peacemaker for all people Jews and Gentiles slave and free men and women all of us being reconciled to God through him and reconciled to one another through him but it was rooted in Jesus self-awareness for Jesus who he was and how he saw himself were the same thing now often the way others saw Jesus was not accurate but Jesus self-identity Jesus self-awareness his self-assurance and therefore his ability to be assertive in managing conflict really shine in this particular poignant scene and I learn a great deal not only about conflict revolution resolution but but more importantly about a healthy self-awareness and self-identity so here's my question how is it you have learned to maintain perspective to be able to align as much as possible the who you are with the who you see yourself to be with the who others see you to be how how are you able to maintain a healthy self-awareness or perspective so that you can be a positive influence in managing conflict. I'd love for us to chat about that a bit more. This has been a very intriguing study for me, a good reminder of how the Spirit has helped me grow through some challenges and make me more fit for His use. May God bless us as continued peacemakers. Talk to you online.